I would have been angry <laughs> if, I, if, if I had no, not noticed that. Thank yeah. you for letting me know. <laughs> All right. So would someone like to uh, share anything with the large group here about either how you are right now or <clears throat> um, your experience of the self-connection exercise or anything that's alive in you that'll help you become more present? In particular, around what we're doing here. And if you don't know how to raise your hand, there's a little um, smiley face on the bottom of your screen that says reactions. And you see John and put his hand. Oh, he yeah. did have his hand. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah. I think you were first. And then Sun. Sun okay. Sanjita. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, um, yeah, a little heaviness around what I'm going to share. I've been feeling off for a, a while and noticing how I'm showing up and not showing up totally the way I want to be showing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am figured out all the things that led to that and how to shift. And I'm, you know, on the way back to being where I want to be and seeing things from a different angle and seeing how I've been showing up sometimes. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to share that whatever your experience might be, because sometimes my experience is here and what's out there are very different, but uh, I've been having that experience and that uh, I'm working on things and, and trying to be more and more of who I want to be. And uh, I've been feeling excited about the, the lessons that I've been learning uh -huh. from having this experience. So, yeah. I and I figured out a way to journal. Ah. <laughs> so. I'm catching a real celebration in you of yeah. uh, sort of catching where you were, that you weren't in a place that you really were enjoying being, and then you you started taking some steps to get to where you wanted to be. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly right. Thank yeah. you. I want to acknowledge the vulnerability of that and the appreciation of connection that I experience with that. That, you know, just like me, just like him, just like everybody, we're so human and uh, it's vulnerable to share. So thank you. Yeah. I love that you thank named you, it. I love that you named it and that you're finding ways to cultivate your vitality and, and engage with life in the way that's satisfying for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Things have shifted. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sangeeta. Where'd you go? Uh oh. Did we lose you? Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I got dropped off. <laughs> oh. I bumped off. Welcome back. <laughs> Did you have something you wanted <laughs> Thank to share you. with the group? Yeah. Oh, I just a lot of gratitude, Jory, for take. Thank you for taking us to that place which we so uh, take for granted, the heart. When you made me place my hand on the heart, which I never do in the normal course of the day. I would never do until you guided me to go to that place and to feel what all is going on. Mm -hmm. And even before you asked us to uh, check and see what, what the face is reflecting, there was this blissful smile, the smile of gratitude for... Um, being here for choosing to be here and for just being such a such a forgiving i don't know how to express it because i've been through a situation it was very difficult for me to get over that challenge nbc has really helped me your sessions have really 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 helped me my takeaways have been very deep and profound and each nugget, each session gave me that just that one step ahead. Mm -hmm. Today's connection was full of gratitude for just, just doing all of it on my own with everybody's support and help, but just walking on that path and it just felt blissful. Lovely. Oh, Thank you so much. Lovely. You're really walking your path and really finding that celebration of life. That's sweet. Thank yes, you. I am. Thank you. Yes. 
Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you for just sharing so much of wisdom and small nuggets with us mm -hmm. in each of these practice sessions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for coming and playing with us yeah. and growing with us. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sarah Joy? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say that um, I really appreciate the topic of um, being alive in conversation. And that's one of the things that brought me to really practice NVC. And one of my teachers, um, his name is Evan Gorslein. It's um, the 10th anniversary this week of his passing. Um, he mm -hmm. passed away right after getting certified fully, mm -hmm. although he was teaching beautifully and he was my support group leader mm -hmm. and so on. Um, but he died of lung cancer. But mm -hmm. I just want to celebrate his um, very gentle um, and um, way of letting people know if they were talking too long and he got disconnected mm -hmm. and he would very very gently let people know that um you know he was feeling sad or confused or whatever he was feeling and why and mm -hmm. and like myself i would stop i must have been going on a long monologue at the time and i just so appreciated um being able to come back to presence and realized that really feels important to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm still learning it, <laughs> um, but I just wanted to honor that and that you're bringing this to all of us. And I wanted to honor Evan um, for, for being such a great teacher. Oh, oh thank you. Let's, thank, let's just take a moment and thank Evan. What's his last name? Gorsline. Gorsline. G-O-R-S-E-L-I-N-E. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a moment to appreciate his gifts with you and all he had to offer. <sighs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah Joy. Mm -hmm. And um, is that complete for you? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Susan. Hi, uh, I want to first express my gratitude and especially for your consideration to put me and other three Chinese speaking uh, partners together. We meet for the first time. I really thanks a lot for that consideration that add me more ease <laughs> and surprise. Yeah. And uh, what's more, I also want to share my sadness, especially. Uh, regarding NVC, because I love NVC so much, I really enjoyed the compassion, the, the kindness, the consideration. It, it, it really nourished nourish my life. And on the other hand, it, it makes me very sad because sometimes when I came to the real world, <laughs> I found that NVC is not everything. And sometimes kindness, um, tolerance and that it's, it's not all. I mean, sometimes we also need the other, the opposite energy, like the fierceness, the firmness, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, that part. Mm -hmm. um, so facing that part that makes me some a little bit sad, actually very sad and also Emily, I also have some confusion how to balance because we also need, it's like in young, no? we also need the other part. Otherwise, we might get hurt. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my. <laughs> I, I really catch that, that, me. Thank you. that you're growing a heart big enough for both the celebrations in your life and how uh, nonviolent communication and things like it have really supported you and connection. And then at the same time, there's mourning for you about how not everybody is is acting in a in a in a compassionate way. And that it that you really experience that sadness. 
You have a sense you were caught? Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of something. Yes. That, <clears throat> reminds me of something that uh, Marshall uh, said. Gary Barron is the name of another uh, trainer that lives up in um, the uh, Eugene, Oregon area, the Pacific Northwest part of the United States. <clears throat> and he, he told a story recently of uh, when he first met Marshall Rosenberg. And um, he, Gary had come from a, another tradition of emotional uh, growth and learning and so forth that really emphasized um, crying and uh, expressing of emotions. And he didn't hear Marshall talk about that part. So he raised his hand during the presentation and he said, you know, uh, Marshall, what do you think about um, crying when you're, you know, crying and expressing emotion in that way? And uh, what, what, he's, what he reported that Marshall said, well, if you really understand nonviolent communication, you'll always be weeping. You'll either be weeping for joy or weeping in sadness. Mm. And so I, 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 I'm, I'm really touched by your sharing because it reminds me of how close mm -hmm. that weeping is to me uh, in every moment mm -hmm. that I let myself feel it. And I don't, I really don't let myself feel it very much. Mm. I, I do, I do try to let myself feel my feelings, but mm. it, it's a little overwhelming sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Anything come up for you when you hear that, Susan? Um, I'm very, very grateful that you shared that part. It helps me to help me to enrich my understanding of the NVC. <laughs> yes, it embraced all, not only that compassion part, but also yeah. the reality, the real part. Thanks a lot for that. Well, yeah. thank, th th thank, thank you, you. And, and thank you for the extra burden that you and others who are not native English speakers, I know that you are doing extra work that we, we English speakers don't have to do. And so I want to acknowledge and appreciate that extra effort that you and others put into being, being present here and doing the, the hard work of uh, interpreting and translating in your own head what's being said. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm very, very touched and feel very warm. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and we actually ask people to put their language, their preferred language in there with their name so that we can put people together. So all of you can, as much as possible, can relate in your native tongue, we call it, yeah, where it really lives most alive in us. Yeah, I, I just made a guess today when I saw that you had your, your name written in uh, Chinese characters, and I, I saw two other people that way, and I thought, I'm going to take a risk and see how it works, and I'm really glad to hear that it, that yeah. it worked for you guys. All right. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's, shall we dive into the lesson now? Today, the lesson is called um, Staying Present in the Face of Anger, Transforming Reaction to Response Ability. <laughs> and responsibility, uh, you know, the way that it's typically said, responsibility, mm -hmm. um, it has a, um, the meaning of it in, in the if you actually look it up in the dictionary it says whose fault is it mm -hmm. you know who, who's to blame and so when we wrote the pathways to liberation matrix uh, we wanted to include this concept of responsibility but we did we wanted to um, split it from blame and criticism mm -hmm. and so we just added a dash to it mm -hmm. so it's a made-up word uh, response dash ability and what we actually meant was the ability to respond rather than the should consciousness that responsibility usually holds and anger is a great place to practice um, reaction uh, to response uh, doing that that transformation from um, reaction to responsibility and uh, to help us we'll go with a, a brief quote here from Marshall Rosenberg. Use anger as a wake-up call. 
to unmet needs. So this is meaningful for me because when I can remember that when the other person that, uh, that I'm with is angry, it's not about me. I might be the stimulus of their anger, but I'm not the cause of their anger. Mm -hmm. That at the root of their anger, there are unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And that when I remember that, then I can support, we can support one another in getting more connected to life, finding a way to um, experience the ability to respond in the face of anger. So if I remember that when, if, if, if Jory ever gets angry at me again, <laughs> if I can remember <laughs> ever, yeah. that, that she, if I can remember that the reason she's angry is because she has, it's a wake up call for her about her unmet needs and she's doing the best she can in that moment to express mm -hmm. those unmet needs. Mm -hmm. It might come out in a way that's not fun for me or for her. Mm -hmm. Anger is usually not fun for either, mm -hmm. e either the giver or the receiver. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, it's also a wake up call for our own anger in the same way that we have unmet needs. It's a very important signal it's the arrows that we throw afterward of right and wrong that get in the way of really addressing what's the underlying cause of that anger. Anybody have any comments or questions about what we've done so far? So I'm going to go out on another limb here and predict that every single one of you have been in the face of anger at some point in your life and that it's probably it's probably been in lots of different forms um, just to go back to that very first screen again um, i like this image i found it uh today um on, on when i was making the slideshow because this shows at least seven different faces of anger and so and there's lots of other ways that anger can be expressed for the purposes of practice today you might want to stick with this kind of anger here you know uh, a, a time of anger when when you notice that the other person is angry but it's not so stimulating that it's that it stimulates your own trauma and uh, because we really don't have a support system here to, to catch you if that happens. So I'm about to ask you to think of a time when you were with an angry person, but see if you can remember a time when it was kind of in this range of one or two on the anger spectrum. So first, just see if a memory comes up for you about a time when you were with um, a person who was annoyed, irritated, maybe frustrated, a little bit angry and they were expressing to you. Mm -hmm. Just call that memory to mind. And now go to your body and see what how your body is reacting in the presence of this angry person. Don't analyze the anger or why you're feeling, uh, why this other person's feeling anger or any of that. Just notice your body's reaction. And then after you notice the reaction, write down a description of what you notice in your body in terms of sensations and emotions. And I'll be quiet for a couple minutes while you just keep going back to the memory, checking the body, writing down the reaction.
I'm going to share my screen with you again. Let's talk about the what you noticed in your body. So if you're willing to either write it in the chat or raise your hand and express what your reaction is, then we'll talk about some of those reactions, especially pay attention to the urge you feel. What's the urge? What do you want to do with your body when you're feeling this anger, when you're being in the presence of someone else's anger? And it might just be the the reaction in that moment, not a doing, but just how it is in that moment for you. Yeah, Anne writes tense, insecure, confused. Nushan says dissociated, mm -hmm. leave the body, mm -hmm. disappear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to hear some more. And then we'll create some categories here to support our learning. What else do you do when you're in the when you're confronted with an angry person? Throw up. Withdraw. withdraw get quiet. Mm -hmm. Fear, muscle tenseness, short breath, weak, tune out mm -hmm. and collapse, feel hollow in my torso. Burst out my fire. Feel troubled and worried. Yeah, mm -hmm. all this makes uh, so much sense. I can resonate with all these reactions. Mm -hmm. All these reactions are very, very deep in us human beings uh, because we have nervous systems mm -hmm. and our nervous systems uh, were um, designed to be responsible. Uh, to be reactive in the face of anger, mm -hmm. uh, to actually support our well-being mm -hmm. and to protect ourselves. And it's so helpful to actually be able to write it down and see it in writing rather <laughs> than just feel it in our body, to be able to label it, to be able to observe it rather than just be washed over with that kind of feeling. Yeah. Recognition is so important. Yeah, so first we notice it, because it's happening anyway. And then if we name it, it gives us some distance, mm -hmm. some of that uh, ob observing presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, some of the the natural instinctive reactive patterns the first one is we freeze so some people talked about their own uh, freezy business to use the words of steve hoskinson of uh, organic intelligence mm -hmm. uh, freezy business we get to be like a deer in the headlights or um, somehow we're frozen or paralyzed uh, where we live in the rainforest uh, there are um, a bazillion um, toads mm -hmm. uh, that come out at night and when we're driving uh, up the driveway those toads see us and some of them lose their lives because they freeze mm -hmm. and we don't see them in time and uh, so sometimes freeze is a great reaction other times not so much uh, yeah. and just to acknowledge what that feels like in our body when it's like all the muscles have stopped moving and they're all holding tense. You know, that's one of the experiences that's part of being alive. So it's an important, like all of these, it's an important way to recognize that something's going on. It's a signal. And so another natural instinctive reaction is to run away, flight. To, and the idea here, of course, is to put as much distance between yourself and what you're perceiving as a threat than um, as you can. Mm -hmm. and, and so both freezing and fleeing 
are it, obviously the need behind both is protection. We're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying to protect our well-being. We're trying to make sure that uh, we stay safe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this, the, the most um, life-serving reaction in the moment is to put as much distance between ourselves and the perceived threat as possible. Um, not that long ago, about 10 years now, 11 years ago, uh, Jury and I and our daughter uh, Jaya were out on a walk uh, in a re relatively remote part of Maui. And uh, we ended up on the wrong side of a fence and uh, there was a, a steer uh, and a, a steer is uh, the definition of a steer is it's a male bull who's really pissed off because someone has castrated him. And so, um, you know, he was very angry that apparently that we were in his territory and he he took off after me mm -hmm. and uh, I could I, I without any thought I noticed that I was running. And I was, I think I was fleeing for my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful that I, that I fleed <laughs> until I noticed that there was a barbed wire fence mm -hmm. that now I had to navigate. Mm -hmm. So I slammed on the brakes, put my hands out and, um, yeah. and managed to cut myself up on the barbed wire. But we, I, meanwhile, Jury had responded in a different way, which was she postured. What'd you do, Jory? I growled back. I got really big and I growled because I saw him moving toward people that I love and I got so protective. And when I growled, <laughs> he stopped. He went. <laughs> yeah, so Jory got big and scary. And she uh, she did more than growl. She, she screamed, no! <coughs> And you it worked better than me as usual. <laughs> it worked. It triggered freeze mm -hmm. in the bull or yeah. the steer. He stopped. He, he stopped in his tracks. <clears throat> it's like I, in a way, I was throwing myself under the bus because it was my husband and my my daughter. You know, so I, I was throwing myself <clears throat> under the bus, and it worked. Thank goodness. Yes, it, <laughs> it definitely worked. And in this case, it triggered freeze in the steer uh joy wasn't quite uh big enough or scary enough to cause the the steer to run away but nice. it worked fine but joy, joy reported when when we were debriefing it afterwards that uh the she made eye contact with this steer and that it seemed like it raised one really? eyebrow i don't remember that oh, yeah. part I, it, i was too frozen <laughs> It's so vivid for me. You said that I that 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 steer made eye contact with you, raised his eyebrows. Oh, right, and, and I thought you had a reaction. I thought, okay, this is the end for me. I do remember yeah. now. And yeah, and then the steer went oh back to God. eating his dinner. <laughs> yeah, he went to <laughs> reliving some trauma here. Okay. And then so, so one final. Yeah, such a good memory for these things. I don't. One final reaction oh. to anger is we fight. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to uh, disable or eliminate the threat to us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is all happening. Uh, our brains are doing all these calculations uh, at the speed of life. And so we're, we're trying to calculate. This is not a rational process, but where our brains are calculating and trying to make a prediction, which of these four choices is the one that's going to save my life here and if we sense that uh, uh that, that that the the threat is really really bigger than us and there's nothing we can do we need to play possum as we say in the united states or or play dead we freeze mm -hmm. other times all the energy by the way when we go into freeze our our blood pressure drops mm -hmm the rate of our respiration goes very, very slow and shallow, mm -hmm. but, uh, and our um, body temperature drops, and uh, we, we lit we're literally freezing. We're mm -hmm. trying to, we're playing dead as best as we can. Mm -hmm. Heart rate will, our nor normal heart rate is somewhere between 60 and mm -hmm. 75 or so for people. 
when we have a freeze response, our heart rate will go down to as low as 40 mm -hmm. temporarily. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is very um, cleverly designed um, by our bodies to uh, mimic death as much as possible. Yeah, I've watched our cat do this. I mean, mm -hmm. it is not just people who do it. It's just being alive. There's yep. when we have no other option. This is almost like surrender going there <clears throat> in your own being. Yeah. Sometimes our nervous system makes a different calculation and all the energy flows to our legs. You can actually, uh, you might have had that uh, if you slow things down in, in your memory with a, either this angry moment or another angry moment when you're confronting a threat, you might be able to feel, I can feel it. I mostly notice it when I'm in the dentist chair. I can feel so much tightness. I want to run away. Mm -hmm. Here's somebody with mm -hmm. sharp things poking around in my mouth and my mm -hmm. rational mind is saying, stay calm, you know, <laughs> but my body wants to run away from this person with the sharp instruments. I see some people shaking their head up and down. You probably see me shaking my head up and down because this is so human. You know, <clears throat> this is so much how we react to things. And again, it's not even just human. It is, this is what life is like. This is what it means to be alive. Other times the, the nervous system makes a, a different prediction that the best thing to do is to fight. Then you might notice that a lot of your energy goes to your throat mm -hmm. or to your, to your fists so that, uh, um, you know, you're, you're actually, I can, I can feel the tightness even as I just talk about it. It's so deep in the neurology mm -hmm. that I feel all the energy going, uh, coming uh, up from my legs and into my, uh, the, the, I don't haven't fought in a long time, but when I was a little boy, I fought every day. It was a kind of a rough neighborhood. Um, uh, and, and, and I was a little kid. And so I was, I was constantly fighting to, to try to um, find my place in the pecking order. And then the final, the final uh, calculation that sometimes we make is posturing. And so um, I love this picture that I found uh, preparing for the class of the, of the bottom, at the bottom center of this cat posturing. Anybody who's had a cat has seen this kind of behavior happen where the cat makes itself literally look twice as big as it used to look or normally looks, maybe even three times the size, opens its mouth bears its fangs, starts hissing, tail gets fluffy, and all that is to try to intimidate the other uh, party in the conflict to back down. And mm -hmm. hopefully they'll freeze or run away mm -hmm. and do anything but fight. Mm -hmm. Most of the time people think that they're ready to fight, but they're actually posturing. Mm -hmm. They're actually wanting to um, uh, create this camouflage. I don't want to fight, but I, I do want to posture in order to get the other uh, party to back down. And it's not a mental thing. It's just, it's our nature to puff up when we feel like something is dangerous, where we're being threatened. Um, and then of course, if they up it, we're either going to fight it out or we're going to run. And you but, can... So that posturing is, is not just, oh, if I get big enough, maybe they'll stop. It's just one of those automatic responses, just like the other responses of freeze, flee, fight, posture, just get big. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll talk more about this, but first I want to give you a chance to go back to your small groups and talk about uh, what it was, what, what you learned about this go jury somebody says about you protecting me from the bull <laughs> yeah i was very grateful oh, i was really really grateful that jury jury did that but you know it also points to the thoughtlessness of the reaction when there is danger you know we're not thinking about it we are just reacting our body has these four different ways of reacting um, and the brain in its own way, you know, the rational brain is really cut off at that point. So how about we go back to small groups for about 14 minutes. So that's just about, uh, in most groups are again, three. So you have three or four minutes to, to practice sharing what you learned about your own reactive pattern. 
and also to listen with empathy to uh, your partners in the small group. And what I mean by listen with empathy is um, you're not going to try to cheer them up. You're not going to try to give them any advice about what they should have done. You're just going to be uh, present, present for what it, what it was like for them to be them. Uh, and if they if the other person makes a request for a reflection, then you might just tell them what you heard or what needs you catch and so forth. So it's a chance to practice both empathy and honesty. And we'll come back here again in about uh, about four, 14 minutes. So again, you'll see a timer in the upper right hand corner of your screen and it'll count down and there'll be one minute at the end. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're all back now. <clears throat> yeah. And love to hear some reports of what you're taking away from this practice. If you'd like to raise your hand or write something in the chat, either one. Love to hear. Uh, what, what's the, go ahead, uh, Patricia. Um, something really interesting came up in our group. Um, when, there were three of us and one of the women didn't feel like talking and then she asked us and we were okay with that. And then she asked us if we felt she didn't to talk. And, um, and then the other two people said, no, you know, doesn't make us angry. But then all of a sudden I focus on the fact that um, some, the strategy of some people who are, are angry is a silent treatment. <clears throat> mm. And sometimes that's worse than the screaming mm -hmm. because it's in, invariably, um, it's like you're not there, you don't exist, you don't matter. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, address that? Um, Jim and Joy. It sounds familiar to me that that's something I do sometimes. Um, and I w address it in terms of what it's like to receive or what it's like to be the person who's doing that. I think more, most in term, more, mostly in terms of this is something that drives you bananas. What is your, what's your responsibility in, in, to yourself? Mm -hmm. to either respond or not respond or give back the silent treatment or share that it gets you upset I mean and, and those terms yeah you're you're noticing all the different options we have and mm -hmm. it really depends on the situation you know sometimes becoming very quiet and arms folded and not responding running away sometimes it's it's getting angry like the things that we covered earlier you know the posturing and things like that and i think it relates to uh, you know how, what do i do in the face of someone uh who might be shutting down right so there it appears to me from outside that they're freezing or they're running away and i want to connect i want to talk so um, I'll pursue mm -hmm. and so I'll move towards and that doesn't always work out so well because the other person does, is not necessarily wanting to. And so mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted to develop more choices and we'll talk about the other choices. That's the next part of the class is to is to learn to trust our own intuition about what choices we have other than these reactive patterns when the other person behaves in an angry manner, including some people do respond um, by shutting, by apparently shutting down or giving the cold shoulder or whatever you want to call it uh, when they get angry. What can we do with that? So we'll, there are some choices and we'll, I think we'll, we'll cover them. So maybe we can check in at the end and see if what, what, what clarity might come up for you, Patricia. How does that sound? Sounds great, thanks. Okay. Thanks for asking. Rob. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's just a, uh, I had a situation uh, yesterday where uh, it, it's kind of a longer story, just pretty short. Like I was uh, in San Francisco on the way to the uh, 
SFO to the airport. I called my daughter and she said she was angry with me because she thought she was coming with me uh, to pick up somebody from the airport. And uh, I felt really panicked, overloaded, and I felt guilty that I thought it was guilt. And uh, my daughter is, uh, you know, she has, um, she does, I guess, clinically suffer, with, you know, from mental illness, you know, a couple of things, and has been suicidal. And so I was like really panicked, like I wanted to go home right away. Mm. So I'm just trying to feel more of a sense of autonomy myself and independence, uh, you know, at the same time supporting and being with her. Uh, she's had a month of, of uh, sore eyes and she's going to have a hard time working as a computer programmer. So yeah, more overstimulated and she's more sensitive than I like. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to uh, calm myself down and uh, yeah, have some uh, autonomy. Yeah. What a great segue, Rob, uh, to the next part of what, what our transformational choices might be when those that we care about, or maybe in some cases it might be someone that we don't care so much about, but we, um, we, we, we do have some choices that are beyond these four that we've talked about so far, but these four actually are like the basis for the transformations. So we're not going to try to get rid of the natural um, reactivity we have, but rather to transform that reactivity into some choices for connections. So let's look at those transformations. <clears throat> the first one is how, how can we transform freeze? Well, luckily, nonviolent communication really supports the transformation of freeze because of the very uh, important and a critical skill of observing. So <clears throat> when we notice another person is angry or when we're angry, works both ways, we stop. Marshall used to say, "When well, if you notice that you're angry, just stop and count to a million. And of course, a million is pretty, pretty big number to count to, but the point is that you stop whatever is happening and use that moment to notice what's going on, to actually attend to what's happening. What do we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and think? So that's what we're noticing. So first you stop, then you notice it, <clears throat> then it can be so helpful to name it and then allow it. This is the, the first step of really giving yourself some compassion you're a human being with reactive patterns. So of course, in so certain situations when <clears throat> there's a loud voice or a stern look or whatever the trigger is, <clears throat> we have uh, our body reacts. So we just stop and notice that first. And that and then we use that as a signal, those feelings that become a signal to then awaken to, our, to the possibility of just clearly observing what's happening. Observing implies that we're no longer lost in the story. Mm -hmm. We're not diagnosing the other person as uh, <clears throat> reactive or this way or that way. We're rather just staying focused on the behaviors that we see or hear, maybe smell, taste, or touch, but usually not. And then also observing the story that we have about that other person. So if I notice a story coming up for me when the other person's angry that, oh, they've, they've got an addiction problem or, oh, they're living out their trauma or, oh, they must be um, <clears throat> um, a narcissist or a psychotic or mm -hmm. depending on what my diagnosis of the moment is, I don't stop. I don't try to stop myself from diagnosing them. I try to notice that I'm diagnosing them and then use that to then take the next little step which is to transform flight. And you do this just by, by taking that energy of stopping and take one step back from the conflict. And you don't have to literally take a step back, although sometimes that's the best, the best choice of action is to literally take one step back from an angry person, or maybe two, or maybe 15, 
or however many steps that your your body tells you you need to take in order to support protection. So we're using the same underlying need to protect, but we're doing it with more consciousness. And then at, after we step back, we have this moment when we can check in with what's going on in my body to actually <clears throat> deepen what was happening when we were noticing to deepen our experience of, of, feel, of feeling ourselves and maybe even beginning to have a sense of what might be going on in the other person. Oh, this person really is angry. They're really annoyed. What, what, what are the feelings that are alive in the room? And this is the skill of feelings awareness, to be aware not only of our own feelings, but other people's feelings. And that then creates the space for transforming posture rather than getting in the other person's face we lean in with curiosity mm -hmm. who needs what right now so feelings are are very useful signals that give us uh, critical information about the state of our needs and if we sense the feelings in another person we can also make some uh, predictive guesses about what needs might be alive in them and it's so helpful for me i have installed this little uh, five sentence five word sentence into my brain when uh so it's available to me um when these reactions occur in me or other people i do it while i'm when i was first learning this and we, we created this pattern maybe eight ten years ago now <clears throat> uh I, I would do it when i was watching tv so some some outburst would happen on a news show or a game show or a, a drama and I tell myself who needs what right now who needs what right now and it's a very safe place to practice watching tv or listening to a radio play or a podcast or mm -hmm. the news show or something like that <clears throat> and then you actually lay down neural pathways in your brain when you do that when you're doing it when it's not so stressful and then it's just sort of automatic you know how you, so many things in your life uh, like when you rode a bike you it took a while to get into it and it was work but then you did it enough and it was automatic and doing something like jim just described is similar to set the brain into automatic and this image by the way is the the very famous statue by an artist named rodan uh, called the thinker <clears throat> and this particular posture in western culture we found out uh, when we were in china that this posture doesn't work for, in, in in at least in, in, uh, with the groups that we did it with in china mm -hmm. but in in uh in the west we have this is a, a very common non-verbal uh anchor for consideration and so you kind of put one arm underneath the other rest your elbow on it and rest your your um, chin on your hand and it awakens this neurology in the same way that when we take a step back it awakens another set of neurons in the brain where we tend to widen our perspective and get more of a point of view and then the final transformation is how do we transform this energy of fighting and so rather than fighting, we're still going to move forward towards the conflict if we sense that our need for protection is met and we want to connect in that moment. You can take one step forward and ask yourself, what might support connection right now? What request could I make of either myself or of the other person that might support connection? Mm -hmm. So then you can put it all together and we're going to invite you to, to stand up in just a moment and do the dance <clears throat> but there's four steps to this dance we call it the conflict dance and uh, we'll guide you through it <clears throat> but i'll just go through it really quickly so you imagine the, con the the angry person in front of you same one that you started the class with you notice it you take you make sure behind you it's safe to take one step back or two Mm -hmm. Then from that place, you stay solid, you lean in, and uh, you can put your... With your hand up or not, you, but you're that, leaning That's optional, in. Yeah, yeah. but you're leaning in with curiosity. When we were in China, we just learned to keep our hands by our side and just kind of 
kind of bow our head with that kind of same kind of consideration. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. And then, and then to step forward towards the conflict, if we sense that what we would really like to do is to um, support connection with a request. And what we're talking about is doing something very physical when when we do this practice <clears throat> right now, because that's laying down the path, the pathways to be able to do it without actually even moving your body. It's not you're not dancing in front of somebody, but you're when in real life, you're actually getting anchored into, oh, there's an option here. There are some steps I can take. Yep. And, and I see a hand up. Yep, Beth and Don. Unmute that. Yeah. Can I see more people or just hand up? Okay. You're on mute, uh, Beth. Sorry, I thought I had <laughs> okay. double time. Well, thank you for these steps. And um, as you were talking, I was thinking about the question about the um, passive aggressive person this works for that too because if you if you take a step back or or forward or whatever you're if you're thinking about this and not just lunging again maybe the person is seems to be passive aggressive but maybe it's just because you're you're responding to their quietness and maybe they're being quiet for a completely different reason. And rather than judging their response to just take mm -hmm. a moment to, to think about um, maybe asking them or yeah. mentioning, I know you're being quiet. Is there, is there some, yeah. you know, whatever. Exactly. That, that's a connection. Exactly what we're doing where we're, yeah. when we say take a step back, it's like, check in and then take a step forward now we have a sense to engage and we get to have the discernment of which direction we're going what what needs to happen beautiful beautiful way of transforming the diagnosis of passive aggressive into curiosity mm -hmm. i wonder what this need uh, what need this person's meeting when they are doing whatever they're doing or not doing whatever they're not doing Beautiful, Beth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Curiosity. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I was also thinking of it in, in ways of, you know, my I was sharing in the small group about my fear of dogs that just appear in front of me, uh, but these steps should help me with that too, because um, mm -hmm. quite often, most of the time, the dogs are just being friendly and curious, and I tend to react. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it might be related. Sometimes our 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 reactions are are deeply wired in this because of trauma. And so, uh, you know, I, I had some bad experiences with dogs uh, when yeah. I was a kid. So I'm super cautious around dogs. And I've learned, just like what you said, many times dogs are they might be barking, but they're like saying, Hi, <laughs> give me a pet. <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing in my territory? And then we can, we can talk about it and we can actually have some connection. <coughs> Thanks, Beth. And John? Hi, I just want to make sure I got the stance right. So it, with notice, step back, lean in, and step forward, those four things. Uh, what? Actually, I guess step back, lean in, and step forward. There's three things. Yeah, yeah that's three actual moves. So, what's associated with each one? So, um, I want to make sure I have yeah, the pattern. The, the the noticing, stopping, and noticing is transformation of the freeze energy. Stepping back is transformation of the flight energy. Leaning in is transformation of posture energy puffing ourselves up. Stepping forward is transformation of fight energy. And your dance, Sorry. your dance may be different. You, <laughs> this is just the one that, that we teach because it shows the observation, feeling, need, request too. But you, sometimes it might be uh, the most appropriate thing and your intuition might say, the first thing I need to do is just get curious. And make an empathy guess. Other times it might be to engage. So you know it, it can be any of any mm -hmm. any of these things. 
Yeah, it, it's actually just pointing to how we want to be self-connected and then connect. That's that's really at the heart of that. Yep. Is that is that complete, John? I see you turned your head. Yep. Good. Uh, Odile, and then we'll practice. Yeah, I mean, what Jory said really resonated. My question was, uh, where does zero step fall into all of this? Because if I can't get back to the zero step, then I can't proceed anywhere from yeah. any response that I'm you, um, you you can stay in that step back stage for as long as you need to, or even in the absolutely. stop phase. You know, sometimes it's really helpful to stop for a day or maybe forever. Right. You know, I, I would never want to encourage anybody to stay in a relationship that is violent or abusive. Stop mm -hmm. and move away and find yourself protection. Don't use NBC when protection is the highest need. Use NBC when connection is the highest need. Just like they say on the airplane, put your oxygen mask on yourself before assisting others. That's actually what we're doing here when we step back. We're putting the oxygen mask on ourselves, And then we can decide if we lean in. I mean, there's definitely relationships that I have had in the past that I've stepped back from and I haven't gone back to mm -hmm. because it did not seem safe to me. I might be open at some point to re-evaluating that. But last time I checked, I think it was just a, a few weeks ago, uh, we hit 8 billion people on the planet, 8 billion. So I don't need to hang out with somebody who wants to hurt me anymore. I can find somebody else to hang out with. There's 8 billion other human beings and, and a <laughs> lot of them are safe. And so that's who I want to hang out with is people that uh, support a sense of connection and safety. Does that make sense to you, Odile? Yeah, it does. And I had the second um, um, second aspect that came alive is uh, this this um, you know in many traditions we have um, if my tendency is to go right, then I need to go a little bit left to stay in the center. So if my tendency is to freeze, then I need to move a little bit out of that if my tendency is to. So I guess these steps, like you said, will be recalibrated from where I am at this point. Uh, go right and go left. Yeah, yeah, that yeah makes nice. Sense. You're, you are experiencing it in your own personal way and being clear. That's beautiful. That ultimately yeah. is where the shift comes when you make it your own. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I'm complete. Thank you. Okay. And I see. No, nope, she put her hand down. She, oh, she put her, her hand down. Okay, okay, so now if you want to practice, uh, stand up if you can. I'm not going to stand up, but maybe you want to stand up so people can see you do what you do. But I want to be able okay. to keep, keep, dri to, keep driving here. So go ahead and stand up if you can, and then make sure that uh, you can take a step back. So move your chair out of the way, so you have a safe a safe path behind you. So you would start here. Of there course. Go. And then do your own version of the zero step. So you're really as prepared as you can be to do this exercise. And what we mean by the zero step is just clear, get clear on your intention. Your intention in this moment is to practice something new and to see what you can learn. You don't have to try to, your intention is not to do it right or to, anything like that. It's just to see what you can learn you to connect with yourself. Okay. There you go. And then bring your attention to the present moment. And open yourself to outcome. Just to get curious to see what you can learn. And the first time we go through the dance, we'll go super, 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 super slow. So bring to mind that an observation of a time when someone was a little bit angry with you. Something in a one scale of one or two, like you started with today. And just imagine that this person is in front of you in your mind's eye. And if you want to, you can even put a clear, 
plexiglass barrier. Imagine that there's a plexiglass barrier between you and the other person to really protect yourself. So nothing, no harm can come to you during this exercise. And just kind of relive the, the anger coming towards you and just stop. Stop and notice what's actually happening. And you can describe it to yourself. Then take one step back and consider what feelings are alive. Starting with yourself, what feelings do you notice in yourself? Are you feeling scared, alert, angry, hurt, something else? Just make room to notice sensations and emotions. Name them for yourself. And do the same thing for the other person. What do you notice? What do you guess about their feelings? What, what other feelings are in the room? Just to be present with all the feelings that might be alive and how they're changing. And then get curious, put your hand on your chin if you'd like, or just lean forward. And ask yourself, who needs what right now? The other person's feeling angry because they have a need mm. that has not been satisfied. Mm. What need do you imagine that is? And what need is alive in you? Mm. Then if you want to choose to, you can choose to take one step forward and ask yourself what might help to support connection. What might help? Maybe you want to acknowledge the other person's experience. Maybe you want to acknowledge your own experience. Maybe you want to just be quiet. Maybe you want to leave. There's 10,000 things that you could choose. What might help? And then it's a new moment. Mm -hmm. The other person is going to say or do something new now. And so you observe that. And then you step back, sense the feelings alive, get curious and lean forward. Who needs what right now? Take one step forward if you choose to and ask what might help. Then again, it's a new moment. I'm gonna go keep going faster and faster each time. You notice what's happening. You take a step back. You get curious, lean forward. Take a step forward. New moment, 
notice what's happening. Take a step back. Lean forward. Who needs what right now? Take a step forward. What might help? One more time. I'll say it. What's happening right now? Take a step back. What feelings are alive? Get curious. Who needs what right now? Take a step forward, what might help? Now do it on your own, one or, once or twice. Even if you don't know what to say, just stop. Take a step back. Lean forward. Take a step forward. Stop. Take a step back. Lean forward. Take a step forward. One or two more times on your own in silence. And then when you're ready, you can sit down. Take a moment and just see how you feel after having had the experience. And let's hear from a few people what this was like. Raise your hand if you'd like to share. Monica, go ahead. Yeah, so for me, um, I kind of realize, you know, that I really um, do not want to connect with this person on a personal level. I just want to keep it as a business level because um, we have different ways of looking at things and um, we can't agree on, you know, so and I end up getting frustrated and hurt. And so I think it's better. I don't want to connect with this person. I just want to keep it at a business level. I really don't want to connect. I've tried and um, yeah, it hasn't worked out better. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, so I choose not to connect. I choose to just stay on a professional level with this person. Yeah, that level of clarity that we have and the we do have choice and you're realizing what will meet more needs at less cost for me that's such an important concept to get what will meet more needs at less cost yeah thank you monica appreciate that yeah. love to hear uh other voices including patricia uh because uh said i'd come back to you and i'm curious to see what you learn from this practice as well but I'd love to hear other voices, especially voices we haven't heard yet today, but I'm open to hearing from every everybody, anybody. We have about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to hear from lots of voices. So Patricia, if you come forward, if you're still here. I'm sorry, Jory. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I got up to get some water, so I didn't oh, hear what you oh. said. Yeah, we want to make sure your questions get answered, and we asked you to wait until we did the practice. So we'll yes, yes, that. yes. Okay. Um, I'm not making the connection on what we did in the silent treatment. Okay. So now, let me make sure I understand it in your case. It's the other person who's giving you the silent treatment, right? Yes. Yeah. So you just imagine that happening. They're giving you the silent treatment. Because, uh, okay, because it's their form of, of expressing anger. Exactly. So now you're, you notice what's actually happening there. And I think the observation, correct me if I'm wrong, the observation is the other person is not speaking. They're being yes. quiet. 
Yes. Right? So that's what's happening. That's what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. There's a story going on in your head that you also have that they that they that this is happening or there's a history of this or it's not whatever. a story in my head it's evidence <laughs> yeah yeah so you've observed that yeah you, i've you, observed you. yes it's not a story in my head it's an observation it's it's, it's a clear observation the person's not talking clear observation. You're noticing there's not a story in your head that's also an observation can you just yeah. imagine taking a step back and having some perspective by the way, you don't actually have to take a step back. You can actually lean back. If you're sitting in a chair, mm -hmm. you can just, mm -hmm. it's this motion. Yeah. It just creates one inch of backward motion engages a different part of the neurology of your brain. Mm -hmm. And it widens perspective. So as you widen perspective, what comes up for you? What do you notice? In terms They're of speed? stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I missed what she said. She said they're stupid. Oh, <laughs> great. So now, so this this shows that's, that's this what shows you're telling yourself. The non-linearity. That of I'm telling myself. Yes. Now that's a story, right? Yes. Notice the story. Oh, I'm telling. So rather than saying the other person is stupid, you could try saying I'm telling myself the other person is stupid. That's a yes. that's an expression of taking one step back. And then you notice how you feel when you tell yourself that story. I bet you feel separate, maybe angry yourself or hurt. Or angry, annoyed. angrier, yes. Yeah. yeah, now I'm angry. Yes. Now you're angry too, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's great that you recognize that. It, it seems like it's just sort of happening, it's obvious, but to be able to name it and be clear mm -hmm. is like a wake up call rather than a victim. So then you get curious, and starting with your own needs. What do you imagine, you're feeling angry. What's the need underneath that angry anger that's being, that you have, that, that, that's crying for attention right now? What's your need, Patricia? My need is not to be discarded like I'm not there. Yeah, and so if the other person doesn't discard you as if you're not there, is it that you really have a need to, to be seen, to have some sort of sense of being in, in, in engagement or in relationship with this other person? Yes, yes. Even if, though it's uncomfortable, I still want to engage. So and if you have this sense of relationship, is it really maybe the word connection fits for you? You really just like to connect in a way, even though it's not comfortable right now. Does that fit? Or is it I another? Think, I think that need is, is, it's ambiguous. My need is ambiguous. Yeah, so you have because a need I for clarity. When, when needs are ambiguous, clarity, yes. we have a need for clarity. What's going on right now? So that's the need for clarity. So, okay, great. Now you know what your need is. And we'll go with clarity just for the exercise. So then you say, what might help clarity? What do you, what's a, some kind of a request that you might be able to make that would support you in gaining the clarity that you would like? I don't even want to make that, that request because I know that it's a request. My, my request would be for the person to speak, but I know that if I say that, it'll shut them even more. Yeah. So, okay. So now we she, recycle like, that. She wants that, so I'm not going to give that. Yeah. You might be right. By the way, your brain's very good at predicting, based on past experience, mm -hmm. what the re mm -hmm. reaction is likely to be in the other person. And maybe it's a story. Maybe this would be a new moment. And if you could ask, what would you, let, let's say it's me, what would you really like to hear from me? If I'm the other person, what, what would you like to hear from a, me? A reaction to what? A reaction, any kind of reaction. Okay, so, so act, act like I'm the other person. Just ask me, and then I'll give you my reaction. Well, besides insulting them, <laughs> refrain <laughs> from insulting you, because <laughs> that's my default. Mm -hmm. um, this is your opportunity I to could... practice what you could say. Yes. <laughs> I that's could good. say... Um, You know, 
when you choose not to respond, I get very anxious. Mm. Like you, what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing with you a feeling and it's, it's as if I'm not in front of you. And what would you like from me? Exactly. I'd like a response from you. Yeah. So um, uh, I uh, let me. My I've got some choices. <clears throat> so I'll I'll go through, and we'll find out which one really contributes to your need. One choice would be. So you want some acknowledgement, Patricia, of how challenging it is when we're in a in a. In, in this kind of a situation and you want to know what's going on for me when you get silence it's really uncomfortable for you is that right yes but you know the person wouldn't say that no I know. you're saying that because you're nbc trainer but the right. person exactly. wouldn't say that. yeah yeah, I'm giving yeah. You, so, so then the second choice what, what i notice the di a difference that made a difference is when you actually asked for the response mm -hmm. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, you're, you're when you tell me what you want, my I, I my my every bit of my body and mind wants to fulfill your request. So another way that I could respond would be with that. The first one was empathy, right? So the the second response could be with honesty. You want to know what comes up for me? Well, I feel scared to death when other people are angry around me. I want to run away. I, I'm just so scared of other people's anger. I don't know what to do with it. It's terrible for me. How do you feel hearing that? Part of me is just thinking they wouldn't say that either, because this is the this is the kind of person that I have experienced that wants to know how you what you want so that they can be sure not to give it to you. Ah, huh. yeah. So let's assume that's that's the that that, that that that's the story you're telling yourself. That makes perfectly perfect sense. Uh, so now I, I connect with that. Um, I the need that's alive in me, if that's what my behavior is, is I want you to understand what it's like to be me. Sometimes I have a story in my head that if you feel pain, the pain of not getting what you want that you'll be able to have empathy for me when I don't get what I want. But that's my, my need is empathy. I want you to understand what it's like to be me. How do you feel when you hear me say that? I think that rings true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that rings true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. That's almost, by the way, uh, you know, um, uh, spoiler alert, anytime, pretty much anybody wants to punish you for anything, it's because they have a need for empathy. Mm. Punishment is all, almost always, I don't want to say always, punishment is often a tragic expression of the need for empathy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. Patricia. Thank you for sharing and giving uh, giving us another chance to slow things down mm -hmm. and share how you can uh, work with this either with another person or with journaling or whatever. And the phrase that goes through my mind in situations like this is acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and now right. Sapna. Yeah, go ahead, Sapna. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, Jim, if you could repeat what you said, um, like what was the suggestion to uh, Patricia that uh, ran through with her? I, I just want to comprehend it better. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure exactly what, which <laughs> one you're, you're talking about, but I, I think I said something like, um, uh, would you like uh, some, uh, I, I, it was my honesty, that's what it was. I want you to understand, Sapna, that sometimes I behave in a way that you interpret as punishment because I need empathy. I, I have a desire for you to understand how I might feel when I think that other people are punishing me. So my need is empathy. 
How does that land for so you? So this is Patricia telling the other person who's who's giving them the silent treatment. Right. This is me, this is me speaking on behalf of the person um, giving the the, the mm -hmm. silent treatment. I'm silent because and I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm doing it <clears throat> with um, with what you're interpreting as demand energy because I need empathy. Because I've had this kind of behavior my whole life. You know, maybe as some trauma, my mother um, shut down when I was angry as a little boy or teacher shut down or whatever it was. And it was awful and I never got the empathy for how awful that was for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm now, maybe this will be, this is the 10 millionth time this has happened. So maybe if I uh, give you the silent treatment, maybe I'll finally get some understanding that I'm just, uh, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. It's what Marshall yeah. called a tragic expression of an unmet need. They may, may, may not even know this. They're not conscious of this. This is deeper than the awareness. It often is an unconscious part of their being. What? Sure. I'm still curious. How can uh, you know if Patricia shoots? How can I get the other person to this place where they can express so openly and with such connection? I'm yeah. I'm lost over there. That that would be ideal, wouldn't it? <clears throat> um, of course, we're not trying to actually get the other person anywhere. But we might have a request, and then if we're open to outcome and we get that gift, we can celebrate that we, we made a request and we got our need met. And it might take 10,000 times. And what could that request be? Um, kind of just exactly what Patricia said. You know, when, when I'm with you and I notice that, you're, that we're in the middle of something and you, um, I wouldn't do it while they're shut down that's not the time to do it do it the next morning at breakfast or a, a time when everybody's resourced <clears throat> i noticed yesterday during our let's do it with jory <clears throat> um i noticed yesterday when we were having our little tiff that um that you left the room and uh, i i was really uh, kind of bereft really really sad mm -hmm. because i was really wanting to finish our conversation mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to know what was going on. I think I did something that uh, that you didn't like, but I don't know what it was. Would you be willing to tell me uh, what you saw or heard that you heard as blame or criticism so we can talk about it? Mm -hmm. Something like that. That might be one way. There's 10,000 10, possible requests, sure. but that's one possibility. Okay, we're, we're almost okay. at the bottom of the hour. So Thank I you so much. You're uh, very welcome. So here's so, the little... So what Go ahead. I heard uh, I heard something else that you said. So, um, and that is not to do it at the moment that is that it is happening. Right. To do it later on. Yes. Mm -hmm. When nervous systems have a chance to go back mm -hmm. to baseline. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a very important part of all of this. Yeah. 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 This is about discernment. To actually be mm -hmm. able to discern if the other person is ready to hear. And whether I'm ready to hear them. Because once yeah. I make a request, I'm making a contract with that other person. I'm going to put my giraffe ears on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just be present for whatever they say. And so that means that I need to make sure that I'm as well resourced as I can be before I make a request for their honesty. Because I got to be prepared to hear something that I'm not going to like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the way that I'm prepared is to make sure my giraffe ears on so that I don't hear what they think. I hear what they need. Mm -hmm. And then I won't get triggered. Mm -hmm. I might get sad or have other feelings, but I won't get angry. Anger is impossible if I have giraffe ears on. It's absolutely impossible to be angry with giraffe ears on. Same with depression, shame, or guilt. You can't have those feelings if you have giraffe ears on because you can't hear thought. You only hear feelings and needs. 
Okay. And I want to acknowledge that Sarah Joy has a question in the chat, but I think we want to do the conclusion of the group first. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, um, so let me just do the things that we always do at the end of the class. And then we'll come back to this, Sarah Joy. If you're, if you're new and you want to be informed of our offerings every week, we have one or two things every week. Uh, just um, click on that link that I put into the chat, and that will... Um, get you hooked up to our email list which you can delete yourself from if you ever get one more email than you enjoy just click on the bottom of the email and you can get back off of it and you'll see that jim put my contact information jory.youcanbook.me into the chat if you would like a private session need a little support or connection um, you can make an appointment uh, to meet at that using that contact information the as i mentioned at the beginning of the call uh, the classes are uh, are recorded and uh, this week there will be two two little recordings for the same class because uh, there was a little technical glitch but you can get them at either of these two uh, places either our website or on a youtube channel if you subscribe to the youtube channel uh, then you'll get a little notice as soon as there's a new uh, class that goes up there and then about a year ago, I wrote a book called Pathways to Nonviolent Communication. I would love it if you'd go out and um, buy 10 copies <laughs> and put them in everybody's stocking for Christmas, if you're a Christmas um, uh, celebrator, or just you know put them in, in the neighbor's um, um, mailbox or whatever you want to do with them. Yeah, and what happens with that money? That money goes to support the Center for Nonviolent Communication. Both the publisher and I have agreed to uh, donate any uh, proceeds from the sale of that book to the Center for Nonviolent Communication. So you're actually supporting more and more consciousness and awareness of nonviolent communication if you do that. Yeah. And if you want to directly support the, C C uh, the Center for Nonviolent Communication, you can use this new link which is how you can uh, donate directly. If you're a U.S. citizen, uh, your, your, your um, donations may be tax deductible. Check with your own um, tax person to get clarity about that. And I think that is everything that I would like to say. <laughs> so let's go back to the question. Yeah, someone had their hand up here. It or says... It says um, uh, one question that came up in our small group is where does a defensive reaction play into this system? So when I hear, so I think you're talking about, are you talking about Sarah Joy? Or are you still here for one thing? I can't tell. Okay. I can't tell whether you're here. She or not. was a moment ago. Are you still here, Sarah Joy? Sorry. Yes, she is. Yeah, okay. So when you say a defensive reaction, are you talking about one in yourself or one in the other person? And I just want, before we go forward, I just, because we're past the, the end of the class, we will do breakout rooms in a moment after we have this last question. So if you want to have an after party, you're welcome yeah. to do that. I'm so, sorry to interrupt you, Sarah Joy. Go ahead, Sarah Joy. Go ahead. Um, if one of the other members wants to go, like if Sanjita wanted to, um, she could, but I think basically it's when the person, the other person is um, being angry, and in your mind, you're getting defensive. And huh. Maybe you you might want to say it out loud. But um, so where does that is that the giraffe and the? It might know, be. I mean, how o only you would know. I mean, defensive would be. I'd be worried about it being a, a a diagnosis that you know I'm being defensive or they're being defensive. I want to know what the behavior is, and that what's the observation that you're labeling as defensive. And then you could figure out whether it's fight, flight, freeze, or posturing. I think when, I, when I'm defensive, I'm fighting or posturing. And so, um, but it doesn't really matter. Defensiveness is always a clue that the need is protection. If you're defending yourself, right, you're protecting yourself. That's a beautiful need. So I want to connect to that. Oh, so you're really wanting to, you're scared right now. You've heard, you've heard what I've said as blame or criticism, and you want to protect yourself. Is that right? Something like that. And that, I and can then, say. And that, last, and that last question, is that right, is so powerful. It's really inviting the person to have their own voice. Yeah. 
Did I get? Did I catch that? I'd be even more nonviolent than yeah. is that right? But and I think point. we both started at the same time. What did you want to say, Sarah Joy? Um, I was just going to say, and where do you go after that? Um, it's, a new, it's a new moment. So you stop. You notice what's happening. You take in the new information. Take a step back. Check your own feelings. Get curious. Lean in. Who needs what right now? And then you'll get the answer of what what comes next. You can't tell from here at uh, you know on Monday because this might happen next Thursday. But who knows? It's never. It's always going to be a new moment. So you learn to trust your own intuition about what will meet the most needs at the least cost and be willing to make a mistake mm -hmm. when you try. Yeah. No, no matter what do you, you try. Ever say, go ahead. Do you, do you ever say, um, I, I need a moment to, to ah. think about that? Or like, if you need uh, to give absolutely. yourself some self compassion. Absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Uh, I need a moment. I'll be right back. You know, I've got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to take a moment because you think that might, you know, saying that might be triggering. It's like, I really want to talk to you, but I got to go to the bathroom first. Take your moment. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a very powerful request. Or even, you know what? I think I need a break. Can mm -hmm. we revisit this after a good night's sleep? Yeah, yeah. That's another way to take care of yourself. There could be, again, 10,000 possibilities. Right. Uh, I love how you just step back. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. So thank you to all of you who brought your questions forward and shared whatever was going on. It really supports us in being able to contribute in the way we want and also contributes to you and to everybody else to be able to hear different perspectives and questions. <clears throat> Next week, by the way, um, your voting has been tabulated yet again. And the uh, class will be on something called beneficial regret. Beneficial regret refers to um, what we can do in situations when we think, uh, or the other person thinks, that we've made a mistake, and we're, we 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 have there's been a missed opportunity for connection. What can we do to move towards repair when there's been some kind of a breach? All right, so that's what we'll work on next week, beneficial regret. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're done for today. And if you'd like to stick around, uh, we'll put you into small groups and we'll go have our dinner while you guys get to hang out a little bit more. But thanks for being here, everybody. Aloha. Mm -hmm. Really fun to see your faces. Bye. Thank you Bye. so Bye. much. Another Bye. wonderful. Aloha. Aloha. Bye -bye. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thanks a lot. Well, Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice breakfast, Bye. dinner, or whatever it is. <laughs>